Okay, folks, uh, time now for uh, talk number two, and our next speaker is Jacopo Ermeniger, and his title today is Elementary Vibrations and Algebraic Weak Factorization Systems. Thank you. Um, well, thanks to the organizing for organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, so this talk is, is about a joint work with uh, Fabio Pasquali and Tino Rosolini. And as I see it is a, is a contribution to, to the understanding of the relation between the, the first order concept of equality and the identity type in, in dependent type theories. So uh, well, more specifically, uh, we shall be using the language of, of vibrations. So the, the faithful vibrations or, or indexed posets, if you prefer, uh, provide like an algebraic specification for, for logical theories and their semantics. Uh, while on the other hand, they, they also appear uh, as, as part of a model of, of a dependent type theory, say, as in, a, in a comprehension category. Now, equality in the, in the first sense has, uh, has an established treatment, uh, category theoretic treatment in terms of, of certain left adjoints, and, and a fabrication having this left adjoints is called elementary. Uh, while on the other hand, the, the, the category theoretic treatment of uh, uh, of the identity type is, is currently done using weak factorization systems or, or some related structure. And as different as they, as they may seem, they, they being approaches to, to the same thing, namely equality, they, they share some common structure. And in trying isolating this, this structure, uh, we, uh, we prove a characterization of, uh, of elementary vibrations uh, which is based on, on this common structure, and which besides we, we believe being interested in, in itself, is uh, uh, we, we also hope that can help to, to shed light on, on, on the question in, in which sense is the J elimination not uh, a left adjoint. So, uh, well, let's begin with the definition of a growth and vibration. Uh, recall that uh, uh, an arrow uh, is uh, in E is Cartesian over F in A if, uh, uh, if it is terminal among arrows over F into A. And, and also that the choice of, of these Cartesian lifts uh, for every F gives us uh, uh, a family of reindexing functors, an action of F on the fibers. And uh, this in fact is part of an equivalence of uh, vibrations over B with pseudo functors uh, on B up into cut. And this equivalence restricts to, to the other equivalences there. So to see some examples here, the first two vibrations are faithful. Uh, so the first one is, is the vibration of linden von tarski algebras for of well-formed formulas in a context. Uh, while for the other two, well, for, for, the, for, the, for having sub-objects as a vibration, we need pullbacks in C, actually pullbacks along monos. Uh, while for, for making the second functor of vibration, we need weak pullbacks in, in C. Then here we have two non-faithful non vibrations. Uh, and also, as I said before, uh, every comprehension category has an underlying vibration, the functor A to C. And in particular, when we have a, a full comprehension category, the, the vibration is fully determined by, by a class of of arrows in C, which we also call A, uh, such that this, uh, this, this class A is closed under pullback. Uh, this means in particular that uh, the, uh, each fiber of the, of the vibration has, has finite products. Uh, and so as soon as, as C itself has finite products, the, the vibration will have finite products. Um, but yeah, we shall be especially interested in, in those vibration of the form code restricted to, to a class R, where the class R is part of a, of a big factorization system on the category C. Um, right, so um, a vibration with finite products is, is elementary if it has left adjoints to, to reindexing along uh, these parameterized diagonals, which are uh, uh, diagonals with, a, with an additional parameter z. Uh, uh, note that I, I will shorten lists of projections, of product projections like this, uh, using this, uh, this more compact notation. 
uh, and I will do I will use this notation throughout the presentation. Uh, so these left adjoints are required to satisfy Frobenius reciprocity and Vecchio valley condition, uh, which are pretty standard conditions. So these these two isomorphisms uh, they live in the fiber over z times x times x. Um, and now here we have some uh, uh, some examples uh, continuing those from before. So if you have a theory with uh, with conjunctions and an equality predicate, then the left adjoint is defined uh, pairing uh, the left adjoint on on a formula A is defined pairing the formula uh, with with the equality predicates. Uh, also, yeah, for for fun to have uh, to be elementary, we just need a, a strict initial object. Here, the equality predicate is quite trivial. And uh, for COD and also for the two subobjects and weak subobjects, the, the left adjoint is, of course, defined by post composition with the parameterized diagonal. But note that we can, we can also present it as the, as the diagonal in this square, which is a pullback square. So that also in this case, the left adjoint. Uh, has this form that is the, the predicate A paired with the equality predicate, so to say, so which is the diagonal in this case. And this is no coincidence because for faithful vibrations we have this characterization of uh, of those uh, faithful vibrations with products that are elementary, in terms of a, of a family of objects I x in the fiber over x times x that satisfy these three properties, uh, which should look quite familiar, especially. Uh, if you if you understand them in the say in the internal language, um, and uh, yeah, and and so in particular we get this description of the left adjoint as a as a general result. Uh, now these uh, uh, these three properties also hold for for cod for the vibration cod which is not faithful, uh, and being not faithful this means that these three properties become structure. In, in code. So let's give this structure a name. Uh, so given a vibration with finite products, say that a transporter on an object X in the base uh, is given by uh, an object in the, in the fiber over X times X and an arrow over the, the diagonal on X, which we call the loop. And then for every, for every object A over X, uh, a carrier over the second projection. And we also need to impose uh, an equation on this structure. So consider this arrow delta A, which is defined pairing the, the loop with the Cartesian arrow over the diagonal. And then we say that the transporter is strict if this delta A is, uh, is a section of the carrier at A. And yeah, then for uh, the interaction with products, we say that the vibration K has productive transporters if it has transporters on, on every object in the base. And moreover, if there are these arrows chi x, y, where the guy here in the domain is just the global product in E of i, x and i, y. And right, and then we say that it has strict productive transporters if, well, uh, uh, it has trans transporters which are, uh, which are strict in the sense that we saw before. And, uh, and then there are these arrows chi x, y, which moreover are required to commute with the loops in the sense that this triangle has to commute. Uh, right, so now in the, in the case of, uh, of faithful vibrations, uh, we have that this structure uh, uh, reduces or actually is equivalent to the three properties that, that we saw before. And also the commutativities play no role in faithful vibrations and, and therefore we have that these three uh, condition down here are all equivalent. So to look at less trivial examples of transporters, uh, let's consider a, a WFS such that the associated vibration has uh, finite products. Uh, so in this case, we can construct a loop as a factorization of the diagonal, and we can also construct the arrows delta A's uh, in this way where the, the little r here is a pullback of this Rx along uh, an arrow in the right class. So that as soon as we assume that the arrows in, in the left class are closed under pullbacks along R, then we know that this little R is in L and then we get uh, carriers as diagonal fillers. And 
if we also assume that the left class is closed under products, then we get, uh, uh, we get that the vibration cut R has strict productive transporters. Again, the arrows chi are obtained as, as diagonal fillers. Um, right. So here are uh, some examples of WFS that, that uh, enjoy this, this kind of structure. Uh, so of course, any, any uh, factorization system where the right class consists of some kind of monos is going to, to enjoy this property. Uh, and then we have uh, a bunch of WFS from the, uh, coming from the semantics of the identity type. Uh, in particular, uh, in the case of the gambino garner WFS, uh, the carriers are, of course, given by the usual uh, transport terms in, uh, in type theory. Uh, right. So now uh, we want to, uh, uh, to relate this notion of transporters with, with the left adjoints of, uh, uh, of an elementary vibration. And we do so via co-Cartesian arrows. So it is a well-known fact that uh, in a vibration, uh, uh, we have a, a left adjoint uh, along a certain, uh, along a, uh, sorry, a left adjoint to reindexing along a certain F, if and only if uh, the, the arrow F has all co-Cartesian lifts. Uh, and in particular, given a, a left adjoint uh, for, for F, <clears throat> the co-Cartesian lift at A is given by this composite. So that we know that uh, this tells us also how to, to go back so that if we have co-Cartesian lifts, we can recover the left adjoint as looking at the co-domains of the, of the co-Cartesian arrows. Uh, so the co-Cartesian arrows are defined dually to, to the Cartesian ones. So uh, a co-Cartesian arrow over F uh, from A is initial among all, all arrows over F from A. And this means in particular that its universal property can be, uh, um, I mean, has a, as an existence part and a uniqueness part. And we find it convenient to give a name to the uniqueness part. Uh, so that say that an arrow phi in E is locally epic. If uh, uh, for any pair of arrow psi and psi prime that live over the same arrow in the base, then these two arrows are equal as soon as they are equal when precomposed with phi. Um, so the name comes from the fact that if you take a vertical arrow, uh, then this is locally apic, if and only if it is apic in the fiber. And uh, yeah, and then of course, co-cartesian arrows are locally apic. Uh, right, then we have a couple of, of closure, closure conditions on, uh, on classes of arrows in E, which I will not give you the, the, the full details about. Uh, the, so one is saying that the, the class of arrows is product stable. The other one is saying that it is pairable. And the important thing actually, maybe we can look at the details later if there is time. But the important thing is that these two uh, closure conditions correspond precisely. Uh, they are like the formulation in terms of uh, co-Cartesian arrows of uh, the beck chevalley condition and the Frobenius reciprocity for the left adjoints. In the sense that if you take a class of arrows gamma, that is closed under product in the sense, uh, arrows in the, in the base. And if you assume that there are left adjoints to uh, reindexing along arrows in, in gamma, uh, then that also means that you have co-Cartesian lifts of arrows in gamma because of what we saw before. Uh, and then the point is that these, the left adjoints satisfy the beck chevalley condition, the Frobenius reciprocity, if and only if the co-Cartesian arrows are product stable and Bearable. Uh, right, so now it remains to, to relate the co-Cartesian arrows with transporters. And uh, for doing so, recall that this arrow delta A were defined pairing the, the loop on X uh, with a Cartesian arrow uh, uh, over the, the diagonal here. And we have similar arrows for uh, over parameterized diagonals where now uh, we're taking the loop and we are re-indexing it uh, along the product project, sorry, sorry, the terminal arrow from Z. And then we pair this, uh, this re-indexed loop with a Cartesian arrow over the, the parameterized diagonal. 
And now the point is that uh, with the strict productive trans transporters, uh, we can show that these arrows delta EZ enjoy the existence part of the universal property of a co-Cartesian arrow, meaning that for every phi over the same parameterized diagonal, there is a dashed arrow over the identity that makes the upper triangle commute. So uh, this means in particular that the only uh, property uh, uh, that being locally epic is the only property that is missing on, on delta EZ uh, for it to be uh, co-Cartesian. Uh, so I hope now that we have all the ingredients to understand this, this characterization. Uh, so let's give names to these classes of arrows. So delta consists of the parameterized diagonals and theta of all those uh, parameterized loops. Um, and then this first half of the, of the theorem is basically unfolding uh, the, the structure of left adjoints uh, to, to unveil the, the, the structure of strict product transporters, so to say. Uh, so the first step uh, from one to two is going from left adjoints to co-Cartesian arrows. And then from two to three, we, we, from all the co-Cartesian arrows over delta, we only pick one over each uh, simple diagonal. Uh, and then we use the, uh, the universal properties of this arrow together with the fact that the co-partition arrows are product stable and pairable to construct uh, the carriers <coughs> and the, the arrow skies. Uh, and moreover, um, yeah, the fact that this the X is, uh, is co-cartesian uh, and the fact that this delta EZ are obtained uh, 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 by this takes by the loop uh, using reindexing and, and pairing, and the co-Cartesian arrows are stable under reindexing and pairing, then we obtain that uh, all arrows in theta are co-Cartesian and in particular locally epic. Uh, so this is one direction and and here we go, we go back, like we fold back everything to left adjoints, but now providing an explicit description or uh, representatives, if you like, uh, for the co-Cartesian lifts uh, uh, and for the left adjoints. Uh, so in particular, the step from four to five is, uh, uh, is basically the, the lemma that I showed you before. So that uh, starting from strict productive transporters, uh, you show that the arrows in theta enjoy the existence part of the of the universal property of uh, of co-Cartesian arrows, and then the this assumption that they are locally epic uh, gives the fact that the arrows in theta are co-Cartesian. Um, right, and also the, the the explicit description of the left adjoint that we that we obtain in the end is is precisely the expected one. Now. Uh, if we apply this theorem to, to uh, uh, vibration coming from a suitable WFS, uh, then we know that the only condition for it to be elementary is that the arrows in theta must be locally epic. But then in a vibration of this form, this happens if and only if the upper component F1 of the arrow has unique solutions to diagonal fillers. And right, so this means that all those weak factorization systems coming from the semantics of the identity type uh, uh, cannot be uh, cannot be elementary in general because there we have multiple solutions to uh, to lifting problems for the for the reflexivity. Uh, but yeah, but this fact holds only for full comprehension categories. So uh, to look for different vibrations, we consider algebraic factorization systems. Uh, we don't really need to to uh, to see the full definition, what it really matters for us is that we have a vibration of algebras for a monad on R and a vibration of uh, algebras for a pointed end functor on R, um, which we call R maps. And A and R are the full images of these two categories of algebras in C squared. And then we also have a, a, a WFS generated by the by the AWFS, uh, whose right class consists precisely of the full subcategory of 
our maps in C squared. And now on the, on the category of small categories and also on, on groupoids, there is an AWFS whose algebras for the monad are the speech flow and iso vibrations and uh, 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 the category of algebras for the pointed and the functor is uh, given by normal flow and iso vibrations. And this is related to the canonical or Quillen uh, or sorry, Hawk Quillen model structure on, on CAP. Just a quick note that we ought to be wrapping up. So. Yes, yes, I have only one slide left. And right, and in the case of groupoids, uh, we get the vibrations for the, for the groupoid model uh, from this AWFS. Now, if we look at things on CAT, uh, we know that the vibrations on, R, on A and R are not, uh, they, they have strict productive transporters, but they're not elementary. Uh, but in our maps, uh, things are quite different. So here we have loops. And, and the arrows, the, those delta is at the, param the, the parametric loops are, they are locally epic. Uh, but uh, uh, an algebra here in our map has a, has a carrier for these loops, uh, if and only if the algebra is in fact an algebra for the monad. Uh, so this tells us in particular that the vibration of algebras for the monad is elementary. And, and what I'm saying here holds for, for groupoids as well. In particular, you see here on the left, we have a, a, a vibration where the, um, the objects occurring in a factorization of the diagonal are, are, not, uh, are not contractible. But at the same time, the structure giving rise to the interpretation of the identity type here is coming from a, left, a, a structure of left eye joints in, in this vibration. So uh, this seems to suggest that the fact that uh, we can or cannot interpret the, the G elimination as a left adjoint uh, may not depend so much on the extensionality properties that we assume on, on our model. Thank you. All right, well, thank you very much. So uh, let's have a round of applause to thank Jacopo for this talk. Um, okay, and now we're gonna uh, open the floor for questions. So if you have a question, feel free to unmute your microphone, uh, or you can type it in chat, and I'll try to read it. Or you can use uh, raise hand button. Uh, there are many options. May I ask a question? Go ahead. I think you just have. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your talk, Jacopo. I would like to ask you uh, confirmation that uh, if the splitness uh, of vibrations uh, with the fiber functor preserves the elementary structures. Uh, Those, so uh, yeah. You mean the, the, the splitting of a, of a vibration? Yeah. Uh, because it's important uh, to get models. Uh, that uh, the split right, not yes. the, the models I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about uh, uh, I mean, it's a loose they're models they're not, they're not actually models right yeah yeah they would be important uh, that uh, but, yeah but actually I so i believe so but uh, so that uh, i don't know actually i don't know the the general answer to your question but in the specific case of of this diagram say uh, the um, uh, actually this vibration of of algebras and uh, is uh, is equivalent to uh, uh, I mean this being uh, normal iso vibrations uh, sorry split iso vibrations they are they are equivalent to families of of groupoids indexed on on groupoids uh, and that's a, a split presentation of this vibration if you want uh, and that's elementary as well. So in that case, you have a, a split vibration that is because there are two ways to splitting a, a vibration. So one would would uh, wonder what happens. Right. But, uh, because we know that the locally Cartesian closed structure works well with the the Benabu ones, but not with the other. We right. Work by Peter Dunst. Yeah. 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 No, we we have not we have not looked into uh, into uh, uh, more details about the connection actually. 
uh, I mean, this is more like a, a, a side observations that we that we made after after obtaining the the characterization, but it's uh, it's very much uh, an investigation in progress. Another question, if I may is uh, um, to connect uh, not only the J elimination, but uh, with the path, uh, what is, the path induction. So uh, are you, uh, if you want to extract uh, the internal language, so called, uh, it would be clear to, for me, at least, to clarify if it's better to connect this structure with, uh, I don't know, with path induction or with the J, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, thank you very much. What's the difference? Uh, I'm not sure. Isn't, isn't path induction just an uh, unnecessary name for uh, J? Uh, Are you asking to me? No. Well, I, I don't know. I'm j I, I, so I didn't understand the question, but maybe we can, we can figure it out later. Yeah. Um, 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 okay, uh, right. if there's a short question, I would, I would entertain it. I would let Jacopo, I would entertain Jacopo entertaining the question. <laughs> um, but, um, okay. Uh, I, uh, oh, there is a question. Uh, oh. Maybe. Just a, a very short question. Yeah. Hi, Jacopo. Uh, uh -huh. In the Gambino Garner uh, identity uh, type weak factorization system, you kind of get the, I mean, it's clear that the weak factorization system itself is constructed out of the existence of these transporter structures, right? Mm -hmm. Because you have the comprehension and then you uh, uh, use right. your transporters along the thing to get it. Yeah. Know? Have you thought of situations where the weak factorization system com comes up out of the existence of some transporter structure? Uh, right, yes, I, I definitely thought about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, actually in, a, in an elementary vibration, uh, or say that if you have a, uh, better, if you have a vibration of, uh, say of this form called R, which is not necessarily coming from a, from a weak factorization system though, but you know that this code R is elementary, then you can prove that the, the, the loops, so to say, have the left lifting property against all arrows in R. But that is not in general enough to, to obtain a, a weak factorization system. You need to, to have some, some additional assumptions. And in particular, what is really missing on, uh, on elementary vibration to, uh, uh, to properly deal with, with identity types is, uh, is comprehensions. Yeah, yeah. And in particular, how the elementary structures uh, interacts with comprehensions. Right, so yeah, assuming so you have some that's, notion that's of That's the next yeah. step to, to okay. figure out, yes. Okay, I think um, the remaining part of this answer will be missing. Um, and so, uh, let's thank Jacopo again for the talk. Um, 